From the art of the deal to keeping it real. Keeping it real. Live from the Simply Vegas studios, it's the Power Move with John Gafford. Back again, back again, back again, boys. Back again. Man. Happy October. Happy October. Mid October, indeed. You know what? And I, I will say this. We probably, I think, have gotten over the hump of our most cancelable episode, oh, wow. which was uh, Where's the Line for Halloween Costumes? No, Not a peep. I think number two was up there. Number two was up there? <laughs> <laughs> number one that never entered. <laughs> maybe, 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 it was up, maybe it was up there. But you know what else? I got to tell you something else. My wife got on me this week. First of all, I'm going to start with this. Congrats. To my left is, well, <laughs> that's a good weekend no, right there. No, no, both no, it, both or, thought it one of no, us. No, no, it. Yeah, there you go. No, but no, because she said, you know what? You you say Colt's name wrong at the entrance to the show. You always say it wrong when you introduce him. And I'm like, really? No, I don't. She goes, yes, you do. So here we go. Colt. How do you say No, that? here we go. Because here, I zone it off when people no, say no, my no. last name. This is, there's 40 this, different ways. I know. This is what I want to do. So at the same time, all right, we're going to say your last name at the same time on three. Ready? One, two, three. Jackass. Yep. <laughs> She's right. I was She's saying right. I was saying it wrong. You, you say exactly. Amadon. Exa- I was oh, saying Amadon. But you know what? He says Amadon. Most uh, honestly 50 50. So I never even noticed that. Is this one of those things where it's like, you know, I don't care what you call me as long as you just call me? Well, you want to know the real truth. Like uh, a couple oh, generations always. ago, somebody came back to the United States with fake last name. So I don't know if I'm saying <laughs> it right or not. So I never fight that. Well, one. you know what? I I, it Amadon, sounds a lot more. Amadon. Amadon. But this is how I'm sure it is. Amadon. You would think, right? I, I, think the, I, think, I think to keep me on track, I think every week we'll give Colt a new nickname. So like this week, it'll Perfect. just be Colt the man Amadan. That is that right. You know, what's funny when you said that though, business lesson, get people's names, right? Always. Don't oh, mispronounce. There's worse. First off, it's not N- N- Neva- Nevada. What the hell do you people call it? No, Nevada. Neva- Neva- Nevada. 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 You know, I actually Nevada. Said, I, if you're going to work in Nevada, call it Nevada. Nevada. It probably I, I, really I, I, is Nevada. It's probably, Nevada. I think that's a Spanish word. It's Nevada. Nevada. No. Nevada. It means whale's vagina. It means Nevada. whale. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> no, agree to disagree. Scholars <laughs> maintain. <laughs> agree so to disagree. People call me, they'll be like, hey, Canal. They'll be like, Canal. I'm with Canal or. It's like, ah. Do they ever go even tris? If, even if they- you, know, you know what? I got, I got thrown out of my freshman Ian, I got my first, my freshman English class in college. I got thrown out. ENC 1101. Because I go there, and there's probably 600 people in this class. And the, uh, the, the, the teacher, professor, whoever it was, was teaching it, is calling off roll the first day. Because it's the first day. It's the only day they ever call roll, just to see who's there for that drop, whatever. So she's ripping off the roll, and she gets to me. And she goes, Gayford. <laughs> At which point... <laughs> you know, smart 18 year old me responds, you know, the, you know, a consonant or a vowel when followed by two consonants receives the long sound <laughs> of the vowel. <laughs> ah, Gafford. That's <laughs> like a good that. way to. At which point, at the end of the class, the t- yeah, you great way to start. Just, yeah, great you should have dropped that class uh, yeah, right there. Well, no, I, it, it was presented to me that it would be in my best option to drop that class. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shortly after that, so that's that's how that went. Great first day of uh, school there. That was an interesting conversation. We're talking a few years back though, when that would yeah. be something would get you made fun of, and the teachers would even pile. on. Oh yeah, they'd pile on. Yeah. They'd pile on. The teachers would even pile on back then with uh, completely things that would yeah. get them fired. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know for it's, it's sure. Ruthless. My teachers. Yeah, stuff they used to say to us and everything. There to be pretty fired. vicious. It, it had made uh, at least CNN. Did you Did you ever have any? Did you ever have any any Catholic nun teachers? Just me. I went to Catholic school. My dad. Did. My dad had Catholic nuns that beat him. We. I had Catholic school, but a weird thing in Canada. Yeah. Where I'm from, the public school was either secular or Catholic. But you're, it was a Catholic public school. Okay. Really. It's a weird thing in public. Where huh? I'm from. Yeah. That is weird. No. You no. Can choose where you send your kids to so a Catholic it? school or a public school. So do they beat you? No, but uh, a couple of them tried a few times. Oh. <laughs> Snatch them up by, their, by the habit and give them the business. So it happened. <laughs> one, one of them has since passed away, and I didn't shed a tear. So. Uh, but no, no, oh, dude. When, yeah. when I was a, when I was oh, a kid, fun. Catholic school I went to, elementary school in my hometown. Um, <clears throat> these nuns were ruthless. You had one sister Mary in second grade that would hit you on the back of the calf with a fly swatter if you were bad. There's that. And then there was Sister Marilyn, Sister Marilyn, the sixth grade teacher, where when I was in fifth grade, they'd alternate you into a class for, uh, for math or whatever it was. And me being, you know, I, I like to feel that it, they were stifling my creativity. Mm-hmm. But I was drawing, one, one day I was drawing uh, sunglasses and beards on the priest in my religion book. Uh, yeah. She walked up behind me, grabbed me by my hair, and slammed my head into the desk. For making... People yeah. cooler. Yeah, for making people cooler. <laughs> exactly. For making people cooler. Next day, next day, six of my friends are no longer in the school because they went home and told their parents what happened. Their parents yoked them out. My dad, eh, you deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's oh, what yeah. I got. 
That's, that's, kind of my, to, that's how my I'm, I'm basically are. doing a fashion makeover for these square ass priests. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Sunglasses cool. and a cool yeah, beard. Exactly. Pretty pretty much no. But but yeah, it was it was it was ruthless to have that happen. But you know, it was a good weekend. Did you guys I, I didn't see really anybody this weekend. Chris and I had an interesting experience. Yes. Uh that was that was a little out there. Colt, what was your weekend? You went to a wedding in uh in Utah. In Salt Lake. Which wedding. I, this is surprising to me. That he didn't go to Chili's. No, no. Well, okay. Oh, I tried to go to Chili's. Chili's, number one, I tried to send cold for you. But you know what Salt Lake City Chili's? You're going to serve me six margaritas and then tow my car? You're towing my car? <laughs> Chili's? Jesus. What's wrong with you? But I didn't almost go. went there. It was like 20 minutes away, city traffic. There was a. So, wait, a what you're saying game. now is. is, is my no, honor is not worth John's 20 minute drive. <laughs> my 20. pain and suffering. No, because it's 20 minutes parked. That's another five minutes. <laughs> and then they tell your car, yeah, so it could be hours. 10, 12 minutes. Yeah, yeah it could it could be be 20, 20 <laughs> minutes I would have gone, but that's one way. It's, uh, yeah, it's an hour yeah. round trip. So yeah, I went to Utah. My brother got married. A yeah. beautiful wed wedding. You know, John was shocked that there's gay people up in Utah. Yeah, you know, no, no, a, no, 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 no. And I don't mean that like no, no, yeah. no, not not bad, but like I, I, I was surprised to, that it's as gay friendly yeah, as I, it is. Yes. I would think with 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 some of the Mormon church, I'll <laughs> with, say it. It with some of the moral uh, compass that is that is you know really the driven Mormon out of that church, place, yeah. I would think it would be not be very friendly. And according to Colt, yeah. it's like top five places. Yeah, no, Utah, yeah. Utah's great. It's great wedding, great fun time. I mean, they danced all night. Yeah. And, a lot of Mariah Carey, Whitney, hey, but no, it, it was Good. a great time. Great time. Is that my your wife. Brother? Yeah, yeah. Your, your brother's yeah, wedding. Beautiful mm -hmm. wedding. Yep. And your then son. Your son my, looked absolutely oh, just beside man, himself, he, miserable. My <laughs> son was so mad, pissed off. Yeah, we're suspenders and bow ties. Three years old, <laughs> but he had a great time. Stole the wedding show. Uh, yeah. My wife. Oh, he was punched balling. a guy. So yeah, it was a good time. Pretty, I, pretty standard. standard, 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 standard. standard. What did I say? Better, better him than you. <laughs> pretty standard old Tuesday. You don't for want to standard. try to Tuesday. crash a wedding while my wife's standing by the uh, oh, no. presents. But yeah, good time. Good times. Good times. Well, when me and Connell this weekend went out again uh, with our NFT crypto mob here in uh, in Las Vegas. Never a dull moment with those cats. Never a dull moment. Uh, first of all, we got to have this guy on the show. I'm, I'm going to have him. I think we're going to go to a new format with the show coming up where we do 30 minutes of our, you know, hilarious banter, if you will, and our uh, knowledge dropping help. But then I want to start bringing some guests in the second half yeah. just to have men. So one of the guys that I meet this weekend walks up to me. He's like, hey, bro, wanted to meet you. And I'm like, cool. What's your name? He's like, I'm Rick, man. We start talking. This guy's got like, he's ginormous. He's got like meat hooks, like the size of this. Like just, just looks like he's wearing boxing gloves. Did he, did he look like that singer? On the uh, Nile cruise we went? Yes, he was. He Bulls was just some hands. Oh, with the man hands. <laughs> yeah, this guy was generous. Happy and I'm like, girl. oh, he's like, what? he's like, what's your Instagram? I'm like, oh, here's my Instagram. He goes, oh, I'm going to follow you. And I look, and I'm already, he's already, I'm already following him. He's the slap for cash dude. He's the dude that makes a living and has turned this into a pretty good chunk of change, smacking dudes in the face professionally. If you've never seen this, it is like, um, it's next level ruthless. So I bet his attorney hates his job. Right, I, like uh, now they have a solid waiver. They have a solid waiver for that. I mean, this is not they like you have a, a good waiver. No, this like, isn't back. Not fighting just, Colt, this is not back alley slapping. This Tomorrow. is like <laughs> this is ESPN. The yeah, Ocho. this is ESPN the Ocho slapping. <laughs> this is the main the main deal on it. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I, you know, I just would love to hear how he took something so incredibly random and he's the king of it and parlayed it into into a decent chunk of change. So well, I'd love to have him on. How much would you guys? Uh, how much would somebody have to for pay this you? dude to slap? The no, zero. The answer is yeah. zero dollars. No, 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 no. If you There's watch no this guy's videos, dude, he, he slaps people in shadow realm. Yeah, <laughs> he puts people into the shadow. Yeah, realm. but yeah. if somebody like here's ten million, you're doing it. Yes. Yeah, you can smack the shadow. Okay. Exactly. Smack like ten million. One million. Yeah. yeah. Get, get a lot closer. <laughs> get get smack eighty thousand. No. Eighty thousand. No. No. Really? Absolutely yeah, not. No. Hundred thousand. Okay. No. Okay. See, hmm. you're, you, Mr. Judgy yeah. has never seen this. Man. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe I we'll have him really in here. It. That's we'll, traumatic brain injury, by the way. Oh, dude, for sure. For you sure. You know that cult? You're like, yeah. That, no, I, I, I get that. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. get that, but so I wonder how much people are. I mean, there's people that'll do that for two hundred bucks. There's, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. But I, it, I, I one time met a guy in Europe, Colt, who said to me, "You know, Chris, you can tell a lot about a country by how much it costs to have somebody killed there." He's like, in Switzerland, it's a million dollars in the bullet. He goes, some places in Ireland, it's, you know, 20 quid in a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, that's all so he needs. Yeah. Yeah, life though. is relative. Yeah, yeah. Life, life is relative true. to everything. But then we go to dinner. So we go to Barry's uh, downtown, uh, which was great. If you've never been to Barry's at Circa, I highly recommend it. Chef Barry's an awesome dude. He used to be the chef at nine. Now has his own spot over there. They sat us in the private dining room, and it was um, – 
Education. Connell came for drink, well, for drinks, quote unquote. <laughs> I'm just bringing so much food; it was crazy. Uh, my buddy Brandon, who owns a company called Moby, which is up and coming, we're we're, we're in invest in, uh, which is a really cool uh, converts crypto into essentially gift cards for any retailer instantly while you're standing there. So it allows you to, to use crypto in a retail setting. It's a really cool platform that he's built there. We're, we're we are big fans of it and think it's going to go big places. Um, it was him. Uh, and then it was uh, Mike J, who is the NFT whisperer, if you will. This is the guy that when they launch NFTs, Mike, Mike handles a lot of the marketing for uh, the pre-mint side of when they do NFTs. And then there he was in all of his glory. Ari Gold. My man, the snack daddy. My man, this dude. All right, you ever know, like, there's some people that walk into the room that just light it up like a, like a beacon of hope for good times to come. And you haven't even gone on his phone yet. Yeah. No, you haven't looked at his phone. This, this, you're like, this dude is going to be a beacon of good times. You just can tell when the second they walk in. That's his cat, right? And uh, anyway, dude, this guy was super entertaining and super interesting at, at dinner. And, and I love when people, it's kind of like that story we told when we were kind of like, um, we were kind of like uh, met the guy in Egypt at the bar and sat talking yeah. for two hours. Right. And then like after two hours, he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I produced all the Wu-Tang <laughs> records. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Lead with Start that. With you know, that. stop. Start it was kind of the same thing with Ari. And you can always tell when people are legit when they don't flex too hard. You're like, what do you do? And he's like, well, you know, I'm in the entertainment business. I handle promotions and some marketing and some stuff for, for, for some entertainers. And uh, you're like, okay. So we got like the whole night. And this dude, and he's also big into crypto. And he's, he's showing us this stuff that's just... I can't, I don't even get into it out of respect for him, but some of the stuff and some of the, some of the value of some of the pieces we saw was, it was insane. If he ever, if he wants to come on and talk about it, he can talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah. It's probably the right move. Probably the right move. Just just to leave that one out there. But you know, when we're done, I'm like, he's following my Instagram. So I follow him and I'm looking through his Instagram and it's like him and Post Malone, him and Paris Hilton, him and Dave Chappelle, him. And you're like, what, what in the world? And you're like, you know what? And I can see how he got there because the guy really was just a beacon of fire. Right, right. But, you know, not just through that, the guy had a, a story of the, call it redemption, oh, yeah. I guess, too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not all just easy walk through the mm -hmm. life. I think a lot of times people get that mistaken. They think the journey is always easy. That guy had a, that guy had a real story to tell. Yeah, he did. About, you know, things he went through. So yeah, very interesting. Not just, you know, him living overseas and just all this other stuff. Yeah. Like, Really just, kind of, you know. Yeah, and just, and what I liked most about his story was, you know, without, again, I'll let him tell it if he wants. I'm not going to get into much of what he shared. But, you know, a big part of it was if you never escape the circle that you're in, you never grow. You know, you never Amen. get there. And, and it was one of those situations where this was a guy that, you know, he's like, I'm looking at the circle I'm in. I'm looking at the guys that I'm hanging around with in high school or whatever it was. And he's like, these guys are doing things that I don't want to be doing. And I'm emulating them and I'm doing that. So he was like, he went away to Israel and served in the military. I don't think that's too personal for me to no, say. No, Sorry, yeah. he, he decided to go to Israel and serve in the military and uh, for a year. And he kept coming back and he goes, I'd come back and it'd be like, yep, same dude, same dude, same conversation, doing mm -hmm. the same stuff. Look to your left, look to your right. Same thing. And then he'd right. go away for, again for another year and he'd come back. Yep, same guys, same yeah. thing, same this. You're coming back as a man after serving in the Israeli military. Yeah. And, and these guys are still hanging out and having the same still dumb conversations. Right. And dude, in life, man, that's one of the hardest things to do, especially as you get better with what you do, is kind of let go of some of those people from the past and let go of some of those circles. And if you're not getting where you want to go, you got to take a look at who you're hanging around, man. you got to look at that circle of what you're doing. And one of the things that I think me and Colt were talking about today at lunch, that I've gotten... I, maybe it's older, wiser. I don't know what it is, but I have gotten so cognizant of my time and not necessarily how I spend it, but who I spend it with has gotten to be so cognizant of, of that. And if you're having the same conversations, and this is what I told Cole today at lunch, I have zero interest in spending any time with anyone that can't do something for me. Now, keep in mind, that is not anything monetary nope. right. that is not giving me something that's not mooching off them. If I can't learn something, if somebody right. doesn't spark a conversation in my brain that inner, that, that makes me think that makes me expand the way that I think and all this stuff, I, I just don't want to invest the time being around them. I don't want to spend any time with people that I have to explain what you meant to. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah Cause everybody true. who's worth hanging out knows exactly what you mean by that. I don't want to hang out with people. It's like cat Williams bit. Like if you, if you ain't, Hustling, if you ain't moving up, I ain't spending time with you. If you selling marijuana last year and you ain't up to crack <laughs> yeah. cocaine yet, I'm not fucking with you. Because, yeah. you know, you got to be moving. You got to be pushing around <laughs> people that want to be better. Because if you're not, 
it's crabs in a bucket. Yeah. yeah. You've seen that and you've heard that phrase. Yeah. But if you're around the same people, they won't let you out. Well, it's well, like Kenny, Kenny Dillingham, who's the offensive coordinator for Florida State, who, you know, we all know I love more. Than him <laughs> what, was that a football team? Yeah, he's the offensive yeah. coordinator for Florida State, said this weekend, and I thought it was such a great quote from a young guy. He goes, you know, if, if people that if you always refer to somebody as being full of potential, that means they've always sucked. They haven't done shit yet. <laughs> That's the truth, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've got, they have a lot of potential, potential, so they've yeah. always sucked. That reminds one. me of uh, what uh, Ed Ogeron said last weekend. Which was, <laughs> no, but I think it's true, and I, I tell people that all the time, like, try not to get married young, you know. Uh, and really? the reason I tell that to people is because – at 18, you should not be the same person at 23. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be the same person at 27. At 30, you, I didn't feel like I got to be who I am really until I was 30. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel like that's where I started. But I same agree. with, totally I've got agree. friends from yeah. high school uh, that I love. You know, and I have all respect for, but I don't go have well, drinks well, with them. I don't go hang out no. with them. I've got, you change it. You, you need to adapt to who you are. And the people you're screwing around with in high school are not, if they don't adapt with you, the whole birds of a feather flock together, right? Yeah. If you hang out with a bunch of dumbasses, you're going, yeah, what you, is it? I'll, show, you, fifth, I'll show you the six. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mean to sound, uh, you know, whatever weird day and age to mention this, but that's why I don't have any tattoos. Yeah. I don't have any tattoos on my arms because I've always thought to myself, am I going to be who I am today in a month? The answer to that is no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The answer is yeah. it's a great idea at the time. Yeah. But I mean, other than the other things like, yeah, I love the band Tool, but you know, I, but I already know that. Who, what do I yeah, need to yeah, tell anyone else yeah. for? The other thing is, do, do you uh, wear the, that, would you would you ever wear the concert T shirt to the show? I, you know, I don't. Would you? Would you? I mean, I, I maybe would. I don't know. Don't be that guy. I don't like. Don't people be wear, Chris. I don't like don't when people wear guy. like. I went to a corn and system of a down on Friday. I saw that. I saw that. that Great awesome. show. And what's funny Unreal. is what's funny is he sent me a he sent me a picture and he was like, "Look how long the handicap line is to get in of people that aren't handicapped." And I'm like, "What show are you at?" He's like, "System of a down." I'm like, "Isn't everybody there kind of handicapped?" <laughs> that was also shameful. But I sent it to him. We <laughs> yes, talked about people shame. lining up in the ADA <laughs> yeah. line. Terrible. They like saw one person hand in, in a chair and started hanging around. It was right. really shameful. My yeah. wife's in a boot right now, so. Yeah. You know, which is fun. Which is she's hobbing along. She's which is fun. Empty yeah. spaces. She's going to yeah, yeah. set the metal detector off yeah, all yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what it's for. But um, wearing the concert shirt at the concert, I mean, I think it's funny when people wear like other not really related bands. Like if they go to a Tool concert, so they wear a not even Chevelle. They'll wear like a, a ACDC shirt or like a Drowning Pool or some other band where you're like, this is not nearly as together. cool. It doesn't see, work. No, but see, like, well, for example, the Renaissance Festival was here this weekend. And I think that's the magic of the Renaissance Festival. Not the people dressed like the Renaissance. You'll see the one dude dressed like Spock out there just for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> like there's like, are you a Klingon? <laughs> like, where are we? You're going to have some meat. It happens every year. That's that's the advantage of going out there. That's, oh. that's funny. Yeah. Ren, Ren Fair. Man. <laughs> Wow. I don't wear jerseys. I don't wear anything. I just dress normal when I go to events. Yeah, I wear jerseys. Oh, no, I get game. it. Yeah, well, but I'm not a. It. I'm not a huge. Again, I don't watch sports that much, except for I saw you at the Golden Knights. Uh, well, I'm not going to say my shameful thing I did. Oh no. <laughs> okay. All right. See, Cole. Again, this is like episode 18. Let me explain you how this works. Uh, you when know, you, I just, when, well, I didn't want there to be a long when, like it's no, Cole no, no, out, no, no, so I have to tell you. Like, no, I no, was he, thinking something. Are I you kidding? You stroke out live on this I thing? Ratings are through the roof. Let's go. No, I, you know. Okay, so um, one Sports of the centered. local local banks invited me out, and you know, I was running late. Monorail was kind of taking their time and uh, <laughs> loves the monorail. I didn't take Monorail, but it is awesome. Um, but was, this the, huge wait, was this the blood bank or like a money yeah, bank? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> it was the semen bank. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks for coming so much this month. <laughs> Here's your, here's your hundred bucks and we got your tickets behind the glass thanks for being our number one taste yeah. tester <laughs> your so, palate wow. your palate oh, called is so well developed and there it goes off the rails and this is our quick. cancellation it's a boy okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah, boy go ahead <laughs> Seems like they'll be smart boy, six foot two. Go ahead, put that over in the A plus. Jesus. Anyways, back to the game. So Golden Knights opener, right? Huge line. There was just line after line to get into the um, into the arena. I can't. I can't go on on this one. No, keep going. But I know. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, God, it's a long line. They're like, Hey, we're at the bar. Come up real quick. I look up. Who do I see? I'm going to go with Chris Connell. Chris Connell. There it is. And his lovely wife, who 
took one for a team with a broken foot, and I go, oh, hey, coming with you guys through the handicap line, and I, yep, I, I said I was with them when I wasn't. Cult. So back to the semen. Hey, you know what? <laughs> What's more shameful? Shameful. <laughs> What's the more shameful? Yeah. Uh, Have you ever had to go to a semen uh, place? <laughs> no. no cult. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> And you're just walking up, and there's like four hot, like twenty year old R nurses there, and they're like, "Here's your cup," and it's like, you know what I'm about to go do? Thanks. So awkward. Oh, so Christ. awkward. So anyway, I, I think so I'm gonna strike out. I'm gonna stroke out. Yeah, so I think uh, I think that you can judge people who you hang out with, right? Like that's oh, that's the what we're talking about. Oh yeah, that's right. That's and what we're talking so about. You can no, no. I, as I, you no. can see, I'm a wealth of knowledge because I hang out with Chris and John. That, that's that's it. no, no. But but what we were saying at lunch was, man, it's like. <laughs> There, there, I think if you really, you, you kind of drift into two schools, right? You drift into the scorekeeping, I think, when it comes to friends. Like, yeah. you're like, oh, well, man, I always invite them to stuff. And they never invite me anywhere. And you're like, kind of keep score with that. As much as you don't want to, I think you do. You do. And then you drift into the obligation side where you're like, ah, oh, man, we have to invite them. Uh, we've been friends with them forever, blah, 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 blah. Can we just get rid of all of this? Like, like, just get rid of all of this, the shame of, 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 of not being invited places, the obligation to invite pl people places. You guys feel bad. It would bad. just make life way more easy. Do you guys feel bad when there's like a group going somewhere and you, you didn't get invited? Like, it, I'm a hermit. I love it. I'm like, thank yeah, God. Yeah, it depends on what it is. If it's like, depends on what it is. Depends on, because you have different circles that do different things, right? You have yeah. people that you're going to kind of, some kind of people you do business with or some people you play sports with it, your sports guy doesn't have to always come to your uh, poetry Jesus. reading or whatever, you know, whatever you do. Um, so you, you have to also be an adult go with, you have to also be an adult and realize maybe you're just not cut out for every activity. Yeah, no, no, I get it. Oh. Like there's some times when outdoors, you know, not my thing. Yeah. There's people, let's say you've taken them outdoors before and they, they wear, they come wearing uh, stupid shoes and they're just pain in the ass. Like, He's a cool guy. Just don't need to go hiking with him. He'll drink yeah. with you. He'll no, drink not that high. But here's the thing: I can be. Fr I can say that I'm friends with somebody and never invite them to anything, yeah, and sure. they never invite me to anything. Yep. Yeah. But yet I find myself I'm in a situation where, like, oh man, like know this person forever. Like I feel obligated to invite them. And then you think about it, you're like, they haven't invited me to anything in three years. Right. Like why do I feel obligated? But yet I still kind of do. It's a weird yeah. guilt sort of thing that you have going on it's just it's it's a it's a weird deal man i we, wish we could it, just let go of. when you think of the tribe though right the tribe mentality i, I don't know what that is dunbar's number or what's we talk yeah we've yeah, got yeah. it's we're one of those to it again. 150 people in your tribe i yeah. feel like your loop is coming up chris we've already talked about this <laughs> uh -oh, uh -oh. the loop is kicking in <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to go what is dunning kruger uh, now dunbar uh, effect uh, 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 semen bank squid game <laughs> <laughs> semen, semen squid game squid game so are you guys a group that would go to semen bank or no <laughs> i don't know why i'd have to go colt i've had 100 yeah. percent of the kids i've wanted to have yeah that's why i went because we had trouble with the last three and they're like well we just need to check and I was fine, you know. What do you mean God. fine? I didn't they're like, they're like, oh my gosh. You know, if it was through the roof, he would have been like, they call me exemplary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fine, fine means fine. here's the line of okay. Oh, it's yeah. just like one click above that. Well, you saw you, my, you saw the, my third child, what he came out with. It, it's just yeah. okay. You saw, you ever see wine bottles on the shelf and it's like Robert Parker, 93. You know those uh, shelves a little lower down in the list? <laughs> they don't have a score on them, Cole. <laughs> it's a fine wine. It's a fine wine. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pass-fail at some point. Pass -fail. It's pass -fail. binary. Just right to pass-fail. Right pass One zero. Yeah, no, yeah. but you know, what, you know what's worse when it comes to friends? You know what's even worse than that? And, and don't be this person, all right? <clears throat> if you are invited somewhere, don't automatically assume that it's okay for you to bring other people that these other people don't. Just Even if they've met them, I don't like the assumption it's okay to bring other people. You say ask. Yeah, you should absolutely ask. You should say, "Hey, what's going on?" Because I might, you know, bring somebody. I think, you know, again, we're, I think we're gonna we're gonna jump into this. We've been twenty four minutes on nonsense, but this brings me. It's like the rules of etiquette. Yeah. You know, I started thinking about being polite today earlier on Instagram. <laughs> I made a post where I said, "Hey, um, you know, elevate your game a little bit." If somebody send you send you a nice thing on, uh, you know, text or a nice Instagram, whatever, I'll actually I have nice stationery. I'll write them a letter and say thank you for the nice things. Or if it does anything, I try to elevate that and be nice etiquette. So. What I did today was I pulled up a, a list that I thought was interesting of that's 56 things. And we're going to go pretty quick through them of etiquette things in business and life, whatever. Cause I think good manners is something that's dying. I think that's a problem that we have. And I think everybody should practice a little bit better of manners as they go along and not just, uh, you know, 
not just assume that the world rotates around you, which I think unfortunately so many people do. And there's a couple of these in, in here I will tell you that are absolute touch points for me. So what about this? How about you have it so that you read an etiquette rule and you get a thumbs up or thumbs down from the- Yeah, here we go. Thumbs system. up, thumbs down. You ready? Pretty here cool. we go. All right, the first one. I like this one. Offer your seat, which means if you're on a train or whatever oh, and you're- absolutely. a Absolutely. Yeah, yeah somebody, yeah, 100%. Yeah. But but you see that, is, it doesn't, that does, that's- not as common as you'd think. Like Keanu I, Reeves does I it. do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Reeves. like anytime I go on the airport, you know, on the shuttle yeah. going back and forth, you'd be shocked at how many people got their hands full with a baby and, and people don't. Yeah. It's just shock. That shocks me. You mean on the monorail? Yeah. On the monorail too. Now only like four people and there's like 10 carts. So know. you get your own. Next one is uh, avoid man spreading. So like if you sit in a seat, don't totally do this. I disagree. I think, that wide is, seat. I think that is one of those fake rules it's fake. that is horseshit because Hold here's on. why man spreading so it means like don't sit like a, don't don't don't, too much don't space be a man, man. Don't, don't, yeah don't be obnoxious don't sit yeah. like an asshole and spread your shit all over but you're entitled to take up a certain amount it's not just man spreading because guess what ladies we have different things happening <laughs> when we sit i've so, never heard yeah. of that yeah i know next one let the waiter come to you don't wave at the waiter oh 100 percent yeah, See, but sometimes there are bad waiters well, that sit there right, for a half a hour. And yeah. like, uh, okay, sometimes you have okay, to. Okay. Yeah. If, you've, if you've been sitting there for 20 minutes and nobody's come yeah. over. Because there, there's a lot of times and they'll come over and yeah. go, what can I get for you? And I want to say so badly, yeah, I need a flare gun and a miracle, apparently, yeah. is what I need. <laughs> can you uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do this for me is what I need to do. But I agree. Not, not, the obnoxious. It better not be yeah. an instant flag. Because if I'm going to a restaurant with you and you're that obnoxious yeah. guy. No, it's obnoxious. Like my, but, my grandfather as a child would get up and go in the kitchen and refill his coffee. My really? dad would do That's that because my he thinks was. he's being helpful. Yeah, he th yeah. same thing. Yeah. Didn't yeah. want to bother you. Didn't want to go get my coffee. Know your audience. Be aware who's around before engaging in a hot topic. Of course. I think Absolutely. if you don't look over your shoulder before you open your mouth, you're an idiot. Uh, make sure to tip. I mean, is that always, a thing? Of course. That's always. just dumb. 20% minimum. But you know what? People don't. They don't. Say excuse me, I think. Is, is this I mean, is this a dying art? I don't yes. I don't think so. I'd say it. No, I, just because yeah. you say it, I'm saying. No, but I, but I mean, I, let, let's, sure. let's, again, let's for, let's sure. go bell curve in the middle. Let's go eighty yeah, percent bell curve. Sure. Oh no! Excuse me. Is this something that enough people are doing? Oh, are they no. saying excuse me? I don't people think so. Don't. Um, don't. Use a coaster. Fuck off. Uh, what? Yeah. No, I get Is that mad excessive? when people don't use coasters at really? nice places. Really? Really cool? Yeah. Well, I can No, I'm too. <laughs> Colt does not use a I coaster. Go, right I hate now. when people I join people in the ADA lines. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He hates no, that. but I, no. Do as I say. There are certain I things, do. right? Like wood when someone's got. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. You'd be so shocked at how many times. Table no, glass table. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, yep. I agree. All right, this year, no. Please and thank you. Uh, I think, always. I think people are still not. Nope. Smile at the cashier, don't the bank teller, your coworkers, even if they don't smile back. Okay, but you know what that is now considered? Sexual harassment. Sexual harassment. Yep, no, I agree. And I'm not being okay, hyperbolic. Okay, counselor. I'm yeah, not no, being I'm hyperbolic. Saying. So be no, careful. I, you I smile. totally agree with that. Just, Sometimes yeah. you smile or you're friendly to people. A polite. And then all of a sudden they're like, don't, don't be yeah, like, he wants me. No. Okay. All right. Holding the door for the person behind you. Always. Always cold, but how all the time I do that, but then sometimes you get stuck at that rush, yeah. But the next like 40 person people, to take over. but they don't, so you're that sitting there okay. and you miss you lose your family. But let's, yeah. but let's talk about the most important part of the hold the door for somebody. It's very similar to the stopping for someone at a crosswalk. I better get the fake jog that you're trying to scooch better, to the door to yeah, get 100%. there. Yeah, if yeah. I'm gonna hold the door for you, you better be fake scooching, or if it's for like a mm. bank and it's a big ass long lineup, I may hold the door for you on the inside. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I was, okay, that's a move. I or, get that. Or if you hold the door and there's a line and they let five or six, I let the person, hey, come, you're in front of me, come back. And you should always, in, if you're in. the next man in line, I'm sorry, I still go old school sometimes. Yeah, I hold the, always you're the next man in line and someone's held the door open for you, it's your job to hold that door for them and the next yep. person, whatever. Right. And they, they need to be relinquished of their duty. It's like fucking the Knights Guard or whatever. Yeah, Game hey, of you let them, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Nice watch. watch. You watch your post and that's what you do. All right, we're going to take a real quick break and we will be back in just a minute with more of Etiquette manners right. you should need to help you in life and business. Be right back. Hey, it's John Gafford. If you want to catch up God, more and see what we're doing, you, you can always go to thejohngafford.com where we'll share any links that we've, things we talked about on the show, as well as links to the YouTube where you can watch us live. And if you want to catch up with me on Instagram, you can always follow me at thejohngafford. I'm here. Give me a shout.